I'm at a remote location outside the city and it's time to test the Air 3's tracking capabilities. I will test out some different scenarios so you can see what it's actually capable of. All right, so let's just start by testing uh, the simple tracking function here. Let me just lower that drone here a little bit. So I am here sitting in the car. So I'll just mark the car here and fire it up. I'm using an ND32 today. It's a ND32 as part of the filter kit that was delivered with the drone. I think you probably need to buy that separately, but at least I got that as part of uh, my package. Uh, so I used the uh, ND32 today because the sun is pretty uh, bright. And uh, we are just making sure there's nobody around here. So, and we are going to take down the... And that was a bird. <laughs> We're going to take the... Um, Exposure level down to minus 0.7 stop, so the, the footage is slightly underexposed. We put it in active track. That's one thing I need to remember. We put it in the back position and then we need to press go, otherwise it doesn't follow along. And we are using a normal mode as it is right now as we want the sensors to be there. So now it's just, yeah, basically following the car. And uh, to make it a little bit more exciting, maybe we should just lower the altitude here. So we have something else, at least some obstacles that it can dodge. So we are five meters above the ground here and I will tilt the gimbal a little bit. So like this, so let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. So, it's following along nicely. I did notice that it said something about the distance, and I think this is uh, specifically for Europe, that you can't have a separation that's more than 50 meters uh, when you're using active track. That is due to the C1 uh, certification uh, of the drone. So now we have a really nice challenge here. We need to pass through. Oh, man. Just <laughs> to pass through the gap here between the wind turbine and me. Uh, or the. See if it does that. I hope it does that. Yes. Works nicely. So let's just try and. Uh, yeah, make it a little bit more challenging. So now it's put in front of me. Like this, and then say active track. So if we put it like something like this, we press go. See what it does. So right now it's flying backwards. Okay. <laughs> That was a wind turbine. But it's keeping up pretty nicely. All right, so let's uh, try something different here. Okay, no, no, let's just grab the corner here. No, 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 no. There's a 90 degree corner here. So we go around that. I guess that's the end of the road. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to show you something that's really, really nice. So I will fly the drone over here. You probably heard that uh, there's uh, this medium tele lens uh, that is present on the drone. And the whole purpose with that is that we can uh, introduce uh, yeah, compression of the background. So if I stop here and switch to the other lens, I will have a three times magnification. 
like this. Maybe I will back the drone off a little bit here. So you can see everything seems so much closer. So now I have marked the car. I've selected this one. We take it on the left side here. And we remember to press go. So now it's just raising. I don't know why it's raising. Maybe it needs a minimum altitude to do this. So it's following the car. Going forward. So now it's following along. I'm not a big fan of this new control that DJI has introduced uh, to set the direction uh, of the active track. You see that it slides towards the back. It should not slide towards the back. Let's just stop it here and go and then like this. Maybe it's because it doesn't recognize uh, the car properly. I would expect when I've selected this, that the drone would reposition itself. So let me just help it a little bit here. Go. It's not doing anything. So stop. Let's subtract it jumps back to back so now I take left so I wanted to stay on the left side of the vehicle Let's see if we can make it do at least something that just goes behind me why is it just going behind me doesn't make sense. But it does look pretty cool, yeah. So now it's coming up on the side. <laughs> it is beta software that's running uh, in the drone as it is right now. So I kind of expect this is the reason why I'm uh, not seeing what I'm expecting to see. Let's just move it a little bit away. Back it a little bit away here. See what happens when I go around the corner here. It did pick me up again. Did not recognize. Yeah, it did pick me up again. So. And this is the advantage of going to this place because uh, you shouldn't really be driving around operating your drone without having 100% <laughs> focus on the road. But there's nobody out here. So this is uh, just a piece plot of land. And I'm not driving that fast, actually. So let's see where is it. It's in the front here. So now we are getting into trouble bubble here. See where it is. We have another wind turbine over here. Yeah, still did a pretty fine job keeping track on me. All right, let's uh, try uh, this experiment one more time and position the drone behind the car here. And just let it track the car on the way back. And we're not using the wide angle view for this. We're just using the normal lens, the normal wide angle lens. So I just mark the car here. Active track, back, go. Start the video. So.
Okay, 36 minutes and 28 seconds according to the screen recorder. I know that uh, we didn't take off immediately after I started the, the screen recorder. So this was a super, super interesting experiment. Uh, no doubt about that. My general impression is that um, tracking is still a little bit confusing with the DJI products. Uh, not that I've seen it done better with other products as uh, competitors like Skydio is not uh, available here in uh, my region. Uh, but I still have the predictability of the tracking is not uh, could be improved. But it's doing a pretty nice job as you saw and it's uh, especially uh, with the introduction of the new uh, 360 full optical avoidance uh, setup. This helps a lot and it brings a lot of confidence into the tracking task that you're doing because you don't need to sort of kind of predict where the drone would sidewards collide with something which is uh, sort of the issue with the, the previous uh, versions. The EU regulation rules about the 50 meter separation that is a pain in the butt and that will introduce a lot of annoyance uh, when you're using this feature but this is not DJI's fault this is legislation and um, there's not a chance that we're gonna change that in uh, any time soon. So if you're interested in knowing more about the Air 3, which is a really, really cool drone, I must say, after been flying this for a while. It kind of fills in some of the spaces uh, where the, the Mini 3 Pro is lacking. Of course, it's also a more expensive drone. You get significantly longer flight time. You get the full 360 obstacle avoidance. You get directional antennas that will help you have a strong signal to the drone so you don't, so it doesn't drop out. And of course you have the crown tune, the camera here, that is a significant upgrade compared to the Mini 3 Pro. And also to the Air 2S, if you're gonna bring that into the equation. And to make it even more cool, this drone is a C1 certified drone. So if you fly in the EU under the EASA drone rules, this means that you can fly this drone in the city with only a A1, A3 certificate. So by now, I probably made quite a few videos about the Air 3. And if you're not convinced if this is a drone for you yet, then I will make sure to compile a playlist with all the Air 3 videos that I've made so far, and you can access those through this card. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you did like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching, and I'll be seeing you around.